Welcome to Horse Racing Gamer, where champions are made. YouTube, what's going on? Horse Racing Gamer, welcome back to another episode, a new start. I feel like this is a fresh, fresh chapter with some of the more recent updates of Galbracer Racer 2004, which I may start referring to as Galbracer Racer 2023. Don't hold me to that. I could change it. Change my silks. I know. I change them all the time. But I mean, come on. Jockeys in North America, like, literally race with, like, what? <laughs> half a dozen different pair of silks like every uh, race card so it's not that uncommon at least in north american racing i'm not sure elsewhere in the world um <clears throat> we're gonna go ahead and kick off today with foals our yearlings that were just born i went ahead and decided to name them based off of names you guys have obviously provided i've only named one of these five uh, one out of the five foals the other ones are for you guys so let's go ahead and start from the top here Speed Demon by Golden Boy out of my master. Um, this name was suggested by Caden. So, Caden, this will be your cult here. Um, I really, really hope, as like the last like foal from Golden Boy, this one turns out to actually be extremely powerful. Um, I, I race with Golden Boy off screen and off and basically free mode, offline mode, and his stats are. I think Golden Boy was a little, the game was a little bit too nice to him. Like, they gave him these great stats, but, like, he never really ran to that level. Like, I ran a bunch of races with him, and I still never felt quite that power that the game was suggesting he had. And I was winning all the races. It wasn't even like I was losing. So, it's like, I just, I think the game overestimated his ability. But, hopefully, this could be the working pair. It's the only horse we'll get from Maya Masters. You can see she has a minus because she has fast pace, not good. So... Ideally, I don't know what we're going to get. Um, Golden Boy was a turf horse. My master, Dirt. We could get a mix of both. And I'm hoping the horse is fast at about the mile distance. That's all really I can hope for. But Caden, this is your guy. So good pedigree. We'll have to wait and see how he turns out. Next, our filly, Rosette Eureka, suggested by Yang Hao. If I said that right, I hope I did. If I didn't, I sincerely apologize. I may have butchered it. Um, from Gentle House out of Cleopatra, you see the pedigree here. Uh, Cleopatra side now, um, looking very good. Western Tiger Swab, Buster, Flying Cowboy, Osmodum, Cleopatra, and Gentle House. Rosette Eureka should be fantastic. I literally have zero doubts. Both of her parents had last corner leader. Both were willful. Um, hopefully, she gets the best of uh, both worlds in that regards, and they don't like I don't know <laughs> make her the opposite of that. Really hopeful for her though. Uh, so, Yang, this will be your girl, Rosette Eureka. Love the name, by the way. Really looking forward to what she's going to be like. Can only imagine. Next, move on to the horse I named. This is the twin sister. 100% twin sister. Well, actually half sister. I take that back. Half sister to Eastside Band. Um, this is Margarita Island by Formal Opera out of Tigris of Stone. Now, Eastside Band is from Diamond Plan out of Tigris of Stone. So these girls are half sisters. So I'm hoping because Formal Opera has been so successful that we will get as monstrous, if not, maybe even a slightly better Eastside band here in Margarita Island, because with Formal Opera, you're going to get the flexibility of the leg types and the preference for either turf or dirt over diamond plans. So technically speaking, if everything goes according to pan, Margarita Island could be stronger than her half-sister, and that would be fantastic. You see the pedigree. I was talking about this in our Discord as of late. You know, um, the best of our sires and brood mares are pretty much all in her blood, except for Chasing Hearts. Western Tiger, Arctic Crop, both are leading sires. Um, for the long haul, I would say as of recent memory in recent years, Diamond Plan is now taking over. Gentle House is catching up. But, I mean, as far as which sires are commonly found in most of our horses... It's Western Tiger, Arctic Crop, uh, with Swab, Buster, and Gemstone in there as well. And Tigris of Stone, showing uh, some good stuff. So as you can see, what I've done for the last two generations of breeding has been taking the willful types and breeding them with the gutsy types. And every time we do that, we seem to get a stronger horse. And I did that again here with Formal Opera and Tigris of Stone. So I hope Margarita Island is as explosive as I expect. <laughs> Next, we're moving on to a horse that me and Abigail are actually sharing. Uh, this is Monarch by Joker's Card out of Butterfly Effect. This colt, as you can see, true third generation horse for the most part. Um, 
yeah, good pedigrees on both sides. I mean, he's got Arctic Crop, Diamond Plan, Joker's Card as uh, the boys on you know his father's side of the family, his mother's side of the family. He has Butterfly Effect and Irish Fleet. He also has Western Tiger and Chasing Hearts. Uh, so Monarch, this guy could really go under the radar. In fact, I think if anybody's discrediting him or discounting him, you're making a big mistake. I sincerely think that as long as everything goes according to plan and the game doesn't give us a horse with like ridiculous stats that don't make sense, like bad stats, I think Monarch could also be a true, true sleeper. In fact, he could be the first east side band type of horse for the boys. I think Delta Dream is there. But there's still a little bit of limitations with Delta Dream. I can't win GWS with Delta Dream. Well, not GWS. I can't win the Dream Series with Delta Dream. Eastside Ban, I think we can get it done. So as great as Delta Dream was, he's still down a notch. But Monarch, this guy, considering his father Joker's card, didn't do terrible, but didn't do anything super special compared to most of our studs. Um... This guy could really be something special. He's got the best of everybody in him. I mean, Western Tiger, Diamond Plan, Arctic Crop. Those are three really strong studs to have in your blood, man. And then for the lady side of things, Irish Fleet. You know, he's got speed, power uh, there, chasing hearts. He's got guts and heart there, butterfly effect. He's got endurance and power. I mean, he really has a chance to be really uh, a low-key perfect horse if it goes well. Grit, willful gutsy it just it, it always seems to work out for us so that's monarch that is me and abigail's boy we will hopefully see him have success and last but not least astrophysicist by he started gazing out of free fear something crazy has been going on before i started recording recording there were four ambulances and uh, fire trucks that went by so something serious i hope is not happening happening but uh, it's a little bit concerning. Usually two is like the norm. So hope whatever that is, wherever they're going, things are okay. But I live around a lot, a lot of young people here in my new, newish area. So you, you guys know when young people get around other young people, sometimes it's chaotic, right? And it's really a shame. So again, this is Astrophysicist. Uh, this is Great Guitarist. This will be your horse. Glad to see you still around on the channel. This will be your girl. By he stargazing out of free fear. I expect good things from this horse. Last corner leader, stretch burst. We've been combining speed and willful, obviously, in this family. She's a third generation filly here, um, at least it's looking like. So when she's getting to that point for her father's side, um, there's not a serious weak link in this family. Lee's gold would probably be the closest, but still, Lee, you know, was you know decent enough. Um, he stargazing came out well. In fact, I think he's doing, he's done okay as a sire so far. I think we lost one of his foals, and that was mainly down to, I think, the uh, the broodmare. So, astrophysicist, looking forward to her. Um, Free Fear has been pretty good for us. I haven't really had any complaints. Um, don't think we've gotten any mega, mega all-stars out of her, but I think she's been solid. So, those are the five yearlings we all named. Uh, Margarita Island is the only one I named. The rest have gone to you guys. And I love the names. I love the uniqueness. I think this is a good group of our unique names and then the one-year-olds of course we have here going for gold the golden boy by real happy or excuse me by golden boy out of real happy heart of stone uh by gentle house out of chasing hearts um, she should be really really fun cannot wait i cannot wait for all these horses by the way um not even uh just singling one out but i think because of what chasing hearts has given us i think she's gonna be really fun to race with her heart level um and guts rating a Big Friday by Gentle House out of Butterfly Effect. Yeah, this guy should be a monster, um, as expected. You Made Me Promise by Gentle House out of Free Fear. Actually not developing as well as the others. This is kind of like, I wouldn't call it a project horse because I was going to do this breeding pair anyways, but I, I, I named her, so I would consider her mines. Um, I'd be shocked if she was bad. I mean, Gentle House has been superb for us so far as a stud. The stallion free fear again i just mentioned her she really hasn't given us bad horses so i, I still expect good things here maybe she's actually okay so her and falling stars are developing at the same rate um by fairy singer out of galaxy star you know fairy singer initially i was thinking was kind of a flop but his his son marksman is actually starting to develop as he's still developing so maybe fairy singer with his growth type maybe it takes you know, two years for you to really see the value of his horses um, 
I'm just kind of hoping that's the case. Can't confirm that yet. Still need to wait to see if grade ones and titles are achievable. Um, solid pedigree here, though. So Falling Stars should be solid. Galaxy Star was amazing. So if anything, her pedigree hopefully should carry the weight here. Um, but yeah, that's Falling Stars. And then last but not least is our one-year-old Philly Phoenix Rising by Gentle House at a Black Ruby. Black Ruby, very powerful. You see the power rating already represented at four stars. This Philly should be strong, should be fun. Um, yeah, it's kind of another, it's going to be another wave of like domination. You know, it was like Western Tiger domination, then Arctic Crop or vice versa, then Diamond Plan. Now it's going to be Gentle House, Formal Opera. It's going to be crazy here. So uh, breeding, before we get into racing here today, these are the finalized breeding plans uh, I'm going to do for this year. I think this is actually one of our largest bills we've ever had in the game. Finally tried to take it a little bit more seriously. So we'll be doing Soy Conquistador and Formal Opera. Keep in mind, every one of these pairings will be starting a new fresh line, a new family, so to speak, and we will continue to branch out from there. So again, I've talked about it in, in the Discord. We had to do it this way this year just to avoid inbreeding. Next year, we'll be able to start taking you know recommendations from you guys and doing breeding pairs that you vote on. And that's what I decided. You will be able to vote on them in the Discord or the YouTube videos. I'll probably just combine them both. Um, going into next year's breeding, I'll list the pairs and you guys will be able to vote on which ones you think we should do. And then obviously, whichever ones get the most votes. And we do confirm that it's the smart thing to do. Those are the horses we'll breed going forward. That way you guys are still obviously very immersed and have a big role in what our future horses are going to turn out to be. So I'm really looking forward to that. So again, Soy Conquistador Formal Opera uh, should be good, hopefully. Cleopatra Solo Rider. Um, these two completely different families. Really excited. I think should be awesome. Tigers of Stone and Diamond Plan. Now, this is Eastside Band's 100% sister. Whatever horse we get from this, if they conceive, Colt, Philly, whatever, it'll be the 100% related sibling of Eastside Band. So super excited about that. Miss Vaporwave and Secret Ending. This horse should be fast. Um, Vaporwave has some speed on her. Secret Ending, of course, that's his main thing. So... Everything goes according to plan. This horse should be extremely fast, and I think that'd be really fun to kind of, um, you know, get, get some good use out of Miss Vaporway for her speed in that regards. Butterfly Effect and, and Valley King. I'm combining two horses that I have, you know, loved dearly in our recent years of this playthrough. Um, the stamina and power of Butterfly Effect with essentially the stamina, power, and heart of Valley King. Um, yeah, this horse... This horse should be fantastic. I can't wait. And it's a really special place for me uh, with these two horses. So I, I'm really looking forward. Bay City and Kinky Light should be another great pairing. Bay City also, I would say, a project horse of mine. In fact, her butterfly effect, I named Cleopatra, but I don't really like, I think that would, I think that's somebody else's horse. Um, I named her, but I would say that's somebody else's. Um, Bay City. Kinky Light should be fun. We should have endurance, power, and hopefully added speed there. Galaxy Star and Secret Ending, again, should be fantastic. You're taking the best of Galaxy Star here, breeding that with the speed and power of Secret Ending. Should be an absolute rocket ship. And last but not least, my favorite in-game girl, Frugal Lark, and our in-game, or excuse me, our original stud, he's stargazing. The last from him, I think Frugal Lark works with anybody that's competent enough to... to support her. He stargazing was a double digit grade one winner. He did end up netting, I think, 11 grade ones in his career. I think he missed a title or maybe I got him all rounder, if anything, but I think that was it. I think I got him all rounder and I missed the GWS for him. Um, so this is our breeding bill coming up. I, I really can't see a single one of these horses being bad. I, you know, I think it's a matter of who's going to be stronger than you know their stable mate but i don't think we're going to get any bad horses from this group it's like the first time that we've done breeding in this game where i actually feel confident whoever conceives is going to give us a very very strong horse i think all these horses should be able to hit double s i'd be very shocked if one of them didn't and i just can't see it um i think everybody's been proven except for the newer ones we still don't know what bay city galaxy star are going to do as brood mares vapor wave but again they have good pedigrees, and that has been very good for us in our playthrough. We've been able to rely on the strength of our pedigrees to obviously give us the horses we have on track today. So that's all the housekeeping. Had to make sure I get all that done. 
two-year-olds. I think I did that in the last episode. Um, so flying home with Nazawa, I'm just kind of getting a, a reminder, whispering goal with Shiba. Cook has Revenge and Common Expector, which I'll go through these horses later, actually, because we still have some time. Still need to get some through some more racing. So because I took a little bit of time, this first episode back will be a little bit longer. I can't do 90-minute episodes anymore, and you guys will not get that many videos a week or a month if I stick to that. So I'm going to start shortening them up, at least by maybe 20, 30, maybe 40 minutes on any given day. So they're still going to be closer to an hour. They just won't be over an hour each time. This video, particularly today, though, that you're listening to and watching right now, may be the exception. So with all that said and done. Oh, yeah. I also have to remember to show you guys. I have in-game studs. Uh, two dudes I acquired, Desert Runner. I don't even know if I showed you that I got these guys. Um, Desert Runner I acquired. Maybe I did. Did I race with him? Yeah, okay. So you guys are aware of Desert Runner. Um, I got him. He likes pack. Close race, okay. Stamina's at 63 already. Um, speed's only at 47. So obviously he's not going to be very fast. He is going to be endurance, power, and um, some good toughness in there. So should have a good health rating. I mean, you see 11 furlongs to 18. Pure distance horse. So could be another fresh uh really really good long distance line um so i'm really looking forward to seeing what he's going to be like i've never raced with him before so playing with him now is like my first time ever so excited for that s ranked horse and irish hill now this is a horse i picked up that you guys did not see at all i picked him up off screen when i was editing videos 55 speed 42 stand let's go ahead and take a quicker look c ranked he's not strong right I'm looking at variables. I picked him up for a couple of reasons. Uh, one, his speed and power rating are already pretty close. So that, to me, tells me at the 7 to 12 for a long distance, he shouldn't struggle too much. His stamina is not great, but hopefully it'll be, gosh, I'm hoping it can at least get to high 50, low 60. Um, it'll be interesting to see how he can handle 12 furlongs. But you see his leg type. Uh, he can run anywhere, and I think if he turns out to be as well as I can make him. Um, I think even getting just two or three horses out of him could be worthwhile because of that leg type. He is a dirt horse as well. So I think the dirt courses in this game are a lot easier to run than the turf ones. I think they require a lot stronger horses on most occasions. So I think with the dirt, um, he'll be really solid for us. Doesn't have a great heart rating. You guys know how I feel about my heart rating. Um, so that's going to be that that's a sacrifice I'm kind of taking. And then his temper is not ideal at all. I haven't raced with him yet, so I have no idea what he's actually going to be like. But you see his abilities as well. He's got an auto ability of Flats Master. He's a closer. He likes free and fast pace. OK, so I do think if I can find the window to make him successful, he could be a decent sire with the right broodmare. I just think it's a case where we have to breed him with arguably our strongest broodmare to really get the value and make sure that we're, you know, hopefully uh, buffing up those temper and heart ratings in that pedigree. Everything else is fine, and, you know, that'll get stronger. So I picked him up. Desert Runner, we have Naked Chariot. Remember, we still have him. He's only four years old. Eastern Knife, remember, we have him, too. He's four years old, and these guys are both still growing. Eastern Knife closer to his peak, but not yet. So what I'm trying to say is, like, we have... Now, technically, four in-game studs. You know, I don't need to, like, buy ten. You know, we'll be all right. I can always continue to add in-game studs as we continue to go along. I'm not picking up electric. I'm not picking up any of these special horses. Again, I, I know this may seem stupid, but I like keeping these horses in the game to race against. I don't want to take all the best horses just to make our own best horses so we can beat the weaker horses. Like, that doesn't make sense to me. Like, I want to beat the best horses in the game. So... It's only ex it's rare exceptions to some of these horses I will pick up, but Electric Arrow I like running against him. I've used him in 2003. He's an awesome dude, extremely fun horse. But I just raced with him in 2003 in that version of the game. I'm just I'm I don't want to race with him again that soon. Now Rare Emerald. Rare Emerald is a horse I will eventually probably get to. Can I pick him up now? Yes, but. It's just going to be one of those cases where it's like, okay, you just do rare emerald type of things. You win a bunch of titles, a bunch of races, and then, yeah, you know you're going to get monsters from him. But again, I like racing against him. He's a fantastic horse. He's a good bar to compare yourself to. So I'm keeping him there. Social brain, I really don't know too much about. Not bad. I'm not a huge fan of that feel rating at 24. Um, 
he has good core settings. He can pretty much run wherever. You just have to find the right uh, distances and days to do that for him. His distance is not bad. His light type is pretty much ideal. He kind of reminds me of Valley King. His stats are so, so similar. So it's like picking him up would just be like getting a Valley King without bears. Okay, I guess. But, um, you know, I'm just, I'm looking for very different horses. Now, Capital Flame, I wanted to pick up, but she's already peaked. Um, I wish I would have found her when she was two years old. So I looked through all the special horses. I just wasn't a huge fan of any of them. I was also looking for horses with special abilities, which most of them didn't have. And when I say special abilities, I, I really mean like abilities that we're not used to seeing in any of our horses, like something that doesn't pop up in the game that often. But most you see these abilities. There's second win. It would be nice to get that back again with Rosie Canary, but he has dust not good. I don't like his stamina. He has low power heart. Like just some of these horses are just they're not my types. I'm not saying if you guys like them, you shouldn't, but they're definitely not my types. So with all of that out of the way. Let's go ahead and hop into the first race after 20 minutes of introduction. Um, so yeah, need to make up for that for sure. Do give me a little bit of time in between each race. I will be, I'm back to uh, writing, putting everything down. That way when I go to edit these videos, it is so much easier for me to keep track. Because when I stopped doing that, that's when I started getting overwhelmed with trying to keep up with everything and losing track of progress. And I'm like, you know what, it takes a little bit of time, but I think it's worth it. Stately Ending. I think this is a horse I requested to ride because, again, I am still looking for in-game studs. Horses that I think are unique and could help our lines in some way. Kind of taking a gamble, but um, Stately Ending here. Uh, Three-year-old filly. And you see her. Sustained growth type. I like it. You see her course setting. She's okay on the turf. She's great on the dirt. That's ideal. That means she should be pretty flexible any surface 8 to 11 furlong so she can run a mile and a little bit over that at a strong distance she's a proceeder easy to work with speed is about to hit 70 pretty soon so we know she's going to be fast stamina is at 53 so that won't be great she'll probably peak between 65 and 70 but still that's okay power will hit 70 her heart will not hit 70 um, but she has good health as well that means this is a filly you can run for a long time and as long as she's fast enough to still stay competitive I'm very curious what type of horse she can be. Last corner leader, slow track, okay, and southpaw. So, the grade three tulip stakes. Let's see how this goes. The grade three tulip stakes. Hopefully you all are well. After all that updating and calibrate your professionalism, or non-professionalism, I guess, depending on how well you think I do with these things. How are you guys doing? I hope you're all well. I've been enjoying talking to you all in the Discord. It's been a blast, man. I'm learning more things about Gallup Racer I didn't know. Um, we're, we're sharing different stories and ideas and, you know, success. So it's been really fun, man. It's been really fun. And hopefully you guys are enjoying all the uh, engagement as well. Now, it wasn't a bad start, but we're kind of boxed in here. And, like, she, I can't really get her. Th I don't know if this gap is open. I, I mean, I think she's okay. Like, it's not ideal. I, I would like her a little bit closer towards the front. We have to finish ninth or better. So she's not supposed to win. So realistically, if I just kind of keep her in the right window, she should have hopefully enough energy in the end to uh, make a run. And I have to be mindful of her stamina. I was racing her offline before I started recording, I think, yesterday. And I was doing well. I was hitting her goals, but... I still feel like I wasn't finishing as strong, and I think that's because I was starting her too soon. So I'm really going to have to hold her and try to take advantage of that speed and see if she can kind of close. But for a Proceeder, it's kind of weird that she doesn't have a lot of stamina. I forgot about her low heart rating as well. Let's actually see. Let's see if she can close in with any speed. Can she catch any horses? She does have a decent power rating. Ooh. Yeah, way too much stamina left. But she's actually closing now, so maybe she can catch some horses at the end. Okay, she's going to hit her goal, I think, by one position. Yeah, that was actually, ironically, now that I'm recording, that was probably the worst I've done with her. <laughs> I forgot as a proceeder, you can't hold her too long. Um, I'm thinking maybe mid, but she is a proceeder, so I can't actually hold her long enough for that to really work. But it's fine. She gets a eighth place finish there. Um, we will uh, we'll continue to adapt. I mean, that was just a request anyways. It's not like I... Uh, have her as a horse so 
Um, not bad, but if I see her pop up again, I'll definitely want to give her another shot. Okay, we're up in the Grade 2 Tampa with Angel Hearts. Now, this is a horse that I was initially going to include in our first recap update video, but um, I decided not to just because I feel like it's just kind of a given. He's from Gentle House. He's going to be good. Three-year-old Colts running 10 furlongs here for the Tampa Stakes. Not sure what the real race is. I'll just be throwing that on screen um, once I get to editing the video because I realized if I were to try to write them ahead of time every rate, I mean every episode... Well, we'll schedule races after the initial, you know, few in the beginning of a video. And then I, there's just basically it's no way for me to, like, keep that up consistently. So I just decided I'll throw the graphics of the real races up once I edit the videos. Winner place goal here in this grade two. In fact, where's my spreadsheet? I probably could just be looking it up just to let you guys know verbally what these races are, I suppose. Um... Still learning a lot about him. Fast growth type. 9 to 14 furlongs. Can run mid or proceeder, as you can see. 90 heart rating, 82 power. He's fast. I can feel that. I just don't know what his number is. By Gentle House out of Chasing Hearts. Chasing Hearts has been a fantastic brood mares. Last corner leader stretch burst. Um, like I said, he's 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 a given. I mean, from these two horses, this is pretty much what I expect. And I still don't even know the rest of his important stats for speed and stam. But He's looking solid. I mean, surely he'll be an awesome sire for us, I think, once um, we get to that point. So this is the Tampa. Let's see. Uh, this is the Grade 2 Hochi Hai Yayoi Shou. I gosh, I, I'm sure I butchered that. My, my goodness. But that that's what this race is in reality. We're off, though. And the Grade 2 Tampa is what I'm going to call it for now. Great start by Angel Hearts. He gets out well, as always. And... Um, we're just kind of going to have him sit here, see what the rest of the field does. Are there any front runners in this field legitimately? I did not do post parades for the last two races. I'll try to remind myself. It's a lot going on. There's a lot of updates I'm doing in these episodes now. I'm keeping up with the horse's stats on my spreadsheet, and then I'm keeping up with just the races and the overall results on my notebook and then i'm trying to remember to do the post parade and it's, it's just a lot it's a lot i'm trying to remind myself of while recording episodes so give me some time to kind of get acclimated to making all these changes um it's, it's more work but i i do enjoy editing it and i think it overall just makes a better presentation a better watching experience for you guys which is the most important thing so um, if anything i just kind of need to stop just doing the minimal when it comes to this stuff and, I, and i'm trying to trying to up my game a little bit here <laughs> pun intended i guess sure since we're playing a game i mean this is like look we're just it, it's just really it's easy with angel hearts man i don't really have to do anything this is how it was with gentle house and pretty much with chasing hearts they're such easy gutsy horses to work with you don't really have to do that much <laughs> you really don't have to do that much no Revo, but it's fine. Last corner leader. I don't even probably don't even need to use the whip the rest of the way, and I'm not going to. Why not? Easy, easy, grade two win there for Angel Hearts. No whip at all. Well, one tap. One tap at the top of the stretch. He gets it done. Easy money for our boy. That's what I mean. Like, this just that's why I didn't include him. I know he's a great horse, but like this is what he should be doing. It's really just falling in line with the expectations. That's his first grade two, though. So, congratulations to him for that. He already has a grade one. That is his first grade two victory. And Angel Hearts looking really strong here by Gentle House out of Chasing Hearts. Feel free to let me know your thoughts on that guy. Wins by two and a half lanes. We obviously could have pushed that. What's the point? If we're winning, we're winning. I don't really see the need to drive the horse any further unless I'm trying to break a record or something like that. Almost a perfect race. Fantastic stuff there from Angel Hearts. Angel Hearts is like the professional of professionals. As a three-year-old already, he comes to work, he knows what he needs to do, he does it, and then he's like, all right, I'm out of here. I'd like to go graze. I will see you all later. <laughs> Master Gemini. This is another horse I requested. I think I, I've done a bunch of requests because, again, if I like a horse after requesting to race with them, I will try to find them again. But if I race with them one time and I don't like the way they run, guess what? I'm not stuck with that horse, and we can let them go. So as opposed to just buying horses, unless I'm 100% certain I want them, I am going to prefer to do these rider requests and negotiations to see. 
this is an open. Uh, I'm not going to do the post parades for opens. Only graded stakes races. So, Master Gemini, four year old filly. I decided to give a chance. She's a proceeder. Expected to finish sixth in this field of 14. Running six furlongs is a sprint. Oh, yeah, she's a gray. Yeah, you guys know how I feel about grays. I'm biased. Now, you guys know how I feel about bad stamina, bad power, heart, whatever. 40 stamina. She's a sprinter. She's five to seven. But look at that course preference. She can run anywhere at this distance. Her leg type, she can be a proceeder or she can lead on rare occasions. Uh, she's technically already peaked or she's at her peak. So what am I really trying to see here? To be honest with you, I'm just curious how a horse like this runs with terrible stamina. Like if you were to use her at the beginning of her two-year-old career, could you get a solid breeding line going of sprinters from her? I guess that's what I'm personally curious about. Will this go anywhere? Probably not. But again, I'm trying to race with more horses in the game, trying to get a feel for different running types, different combination of stats, abilities, and still continue to kind of define what I enjoy and what I want to avoid. Um, there's a bunch of horses in this game, right, guys? I talk about it all the time. There's literally like hundreds, if not over a thousand horses in the Galbracer game, especially in this one, you know. To say we've all raced with every single one of them, I wouldn't believe you if you told me you did. So I'm just trying to experiment with different horses that kind of catch my eye. It doesn't mean I'm going to keep them or whatever, but it's like, hey, I want to see what it's like. Okay. Now, she's supposed to finish six, so let's see. Can she chase down the leader? That's the sixth horse to the inside. She's not doing bad, actually. Now, she might struggle up this incline. It seems like she kind of hits a wall there. Field is catching us. She's going to finish fourth, I think. Not bad. Honestly, not bad. I mean, that incline definitely hurt her. I think on a flat track, she would have actually possibly kept second. Um, it, it was still close. We were all within a head or a nose for that second place finish. Um... Game says I did exactly what I needed to do on the spurt position was B. And, okay, whatever. But, um, yeah, that actually wasn't a bad effort there for Miss Gemini. So, um, yeah, like I said, if I see her pop up again, I might give her another try just because that was quite enjoyable. But I don't think I have any serious plans with her, but I was just curious how a horse like that would run. Another open contest here. It's a mixed field of four-year-old boys and up with one four-year-old filly running nine furlongs on the dirt, running a little over a mile. Naked Chariot fin expected to finish eighth. This guy is developing, um, still a couple years off of his peak. As you can see, this guy is not going to peak till he's almost six years old, so we're just developing with him. Now, I totally forgot he has a terrible power and heart rating. I haven't played with him since, like, in real life, I think 2015 or 2016. It's been a long time. He was one of our first in-game studs I think I used on that file, if it was Sage or if I had to restart. Either way, I haven't played with him in a long time in reality. Um, of course, he's a fun dirt horse. Um, I do remember that, at least. I want to do better with him, obviously, since we've come such a long way now. So, again, he's one of those horses I'm hoping to use as a good in-game star for our dirt line. And we'll see how he goes. See how he goes. Yo, can we talk about Echo Zulu? If anybody uh, watched her recent win, <laughs> Echo Zulu is cracked. She makes six furlongs. Looks like it's nothing. It's like, has she been running in the wrong races this whole time? <laughs> like, what a girl, man. What a girl. I, I talk about it all the time. There's something about watching awesome fillies and mares be able to just run the hooves off of horses that is my favorite aspect of horse racing. I love watching the boys run, but again, I think because the girls carry a little bit less weight, it just really seems like they're flying. I, I can't say that enough, so Echo Zulu, what a girl she is turning out to be, which we already knew, obviously, from her debut and her three-year-old campaign. It just she's, she's, she, she's just magnificent, man. I'm really impressed with her. So anyways, um... So three races done here today. We have a eighth, a first, and a fourth. And granted, these races we're not winning. We're not really supposed to win. So we're pretty much on schedule with that. 
My goal is not to win every race in the game. Again, once Gout Racer gets to that point for me, I will get bored and stop playing, and I don't think anybody would want that, right? I always want this game to be competitive, not to the point where I'm intentionally, like, hurting myself from winning, but, like, you know what I mean. just want to make sure it stays competitive and enjoyable. Otherwise, I lose the motivation to play, to grind, all that. So we just have to finish better than Nath. Naked Chariot. He's such a fun dirt horse to work with, man. He really is. The way he just kind of grinds along, continues to fight. Now the field is coming. And he's still going to hit his goal. Fifth at least. And fourth. Okay. Decent money place finish. So he rounds off your Superfecta as Naked Chariot. If you could play a Superfecta in this game. But unfortunately, Trifecta is as high as it goes. All right, so fourth place finish there for Naked Chariot. Doubles his goal. Almost a perfect race. He's a fun horse, man. That's why I wanted him back. He's a really fun dirt horse to work with. And I'm curious with our really good broodmares we have now and even stronger ones we'll have in a couple of years. I'm so curious what type of awesome dirt horses we can get from Naked Chariot. All right. Got the graded stakes competition here today. Classy and smart. She is up. In this grade three Mississippi, I will get the actual details of this race here in one second, and we will go through the post parade. Okay. Field of 14, anybody I should watch out for looking on this screen? Not really. Classy and smart's been on a roll. I really am not worried. So, the grade three Mississippi. This race in reality, this is actually the Mississippi Handicap, otherwise known as the Challenge Cup. <laughs> or the King Show. I think it's the Challenge Cup, actually. So this is the Grade 3 Challenge Cup in reality. I'm pretty sure. Um, so let's go ahead and go through these post-parade. I'm going to go through it quickly. Last episode, I was taking way too long. It kind of killed my immersion. Here's the one happy request. If you want to pause and look at these horses, stats you can, but I think we all have pretty quick eyes. We've been playing and watching this game for a long time. So that's the one happy request. Here's the two shocking mace. Good heart rating. Everything else is blah, 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 blah. Here's the three peaceful passion. Good heart rating again. Peaceful passion looks like it will be peacefully at the back of the pack. There it is. The four is primary motor, third favorite. Could prove to be a challenge here today. No heart, though. You get in the head-to-head, -head and this horse is going to say, yeah, I'm done for the day. I would like to just go back uh, you know, to the to the meadows, to wherever, to graze, and to just to do non-racing things. The five years magical salon. Uh, yeah, nothing special here. Can run on turf and dirt. Yeah, magical Salon, yeah, you might as well just be there. Not even at the track. Six is Low Tempest. Low Tempest is a decent uh, horse. Um, you know, he has speed. Not a great heart rating. His stamina is whatever. Um, I do recall having some close finishes with him. I think at this level, he's okay. But again, nothing I should be too worried about. Seven horses, Green Bay. Has whip. That'd actually be a decent ability to have one of our horses. Has no chance, but he's still developing. He'll be setting the pace. So expect him to go out, lead by 10 lengths, and uh, absolutely ruin the race. Fortunately, I'm not on a front runner, so we don't have to worry about that. The eight horse is fine. A line. A fine line is not going to have a fine time here. Expected to finish a dead last in this race. Poor, da poor guy. Nine horses. Winged Cat. Winged Cat is a good horse. Uh, much more consistent across the board in regards to his stats in each category. Um, closer to his peak as well, so could actually be a viable threat here today. Ten horse secret fleet, not bad as well. Um, actually, speed, stamina, and power are all pretty matched. So, distance, closer as well at his peak. So, secret fleet could be a dangerous closer if we're not too careful. Last to first as well. So, eleven, go for Cupid. Ah, uh, yeah, has no guts. Really shouldn't be here today. So, we'll kind of ignore that one. We're on the favorite, of course, today, Classy and Smart. As you can see, we're quite um, over margin compared to these other horses in this field. I mean, she's a grade one horse. She's won four grade ones, so this is dropping class. Unfortunately, though, she's already peaked, and you see how quickly her stats have dropped. Should we still use her for breeding? I think we should, but, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll look more into that, um, obviously. Buy Golden Boy out of free fear. It would essentially, like, be putting another free fear in the barn but like a slightly better free fear so i don't really know if that's worth it or not so i'm a little bit 
indecisive on classy and smart for breeding. 13 is perfect show. Great breaking rating. Everything else is kind of, pff, but the heart rating is okay. Bears. And then last but not least is all ruin. Good heart rating. Mediocre like everybody else. There's your field for the grade three Mississippi. Let's rock and roll. Prior affair with the record. Tanaka, why are you having your horse trying to imitate mine under the gate? Get out of here. Your horse got out like a rocket. All right, good start for classy and smart as always, and it's a shame she's not a proceeder. She could really take advantage of that, but it's okay. So yeah, I don't know if I want to use her for breeding. Like nothing is like super significant about her that makes her different from her mother in regards to her stats, her success so far. Um, you know what I mean? Like she's done well, but like is she doing well enough to replace one of the other brood mares? I don't know. We also have to think about, you know, inbreeding and new new lines. Sure, we could get her back there. She's pretty unique from Golden Boy out of Free Fear. So we wouldn't really have to worry about inbreeding with her. We just breed her with an in-game stud, and that eliminates that issue. So um, I don't know. I'm indecisive. I think she does have the flexibility of turf and dirt as well. So it's not that I think she'd be bad to use, but, like, is she worth it? So... I think it's too easy to say now. She has stretch burst and I think what last corner leader or something else. So she has those two abilities. Again, not a bad horse by any means, but you know, we, we do have to think a little bit outside the box and be a little tougher with our um, breeding changes. So um, now she can run really nicely from the back here. 1.5 furlongs to go. She is the winner. She's going to close this field up here. And this is what she does well. Now, 13 is still running pretty hard there. I'm not going to lie. There's stretch burst. A little bit late at the end. Not thinking that was going to actually occur. She gets the win, though. Um, that became closer than I thought. Surely she had enough momentum to run away with it. But hats off to the 13. That horse was not going away. Um, like I was anticipating. So... Classy and smart. That will be her first grade three victory. Wow. That's actually kind of shocking. I actually haven't won a grade three with her before that. Yeah, that was a perfect show. I think, didn't I not, I kind of mentioned that horse. I think because of the heart rating. See, that's the difference. You A horse with a heart rating can always make a, a crazy late rich strike type of surge and prove to be better than the in-game horses that are statistically stronger. Look at that bum weaned the cat finishing in sixth place. Not even hitting the board for the money in North America. Like that's why I look at the horses with heart, man. You'd be surprised. Um, let's see. Do we save that one? Yeah, I'll let that go. But great, great win though. Double S on the spurt. Hand up the course lost well. Like I said, she's not a bad horse, but it's like I don't know, you know. Indecisive. So, two wins, two finishes to round off the Superfectos in fourth place, and then an eighth place finish with the horse I don't even own. So, overall, successful week. We hit all of our goals. We didn't fall below any margins. So, um, yeah, looking on the up and up for that. All right. So, um, we need to get Angel Hearts. Naked Chariot and Classy Smarts all back in the races. So, Angel Hearts, 74 speed. Wow. Is that really as fast as you're going to be? <laughs> he's five. I mean, he's undefeated. He's five for five with one grade one. You see his ability spurt, last corner leader, stretch burst, and post okay, slow track okay. He's definitely a good horse, but like 74 speed is kind of disappointing, is it not? Or am I crazy? <laughs> like if I'm crazy then just say hey you're crazy that's that's amazing but I think considering his pedigree his strength overall 74 speed that's what house wasn't even close to that slow neither was chasing hearts when well, I'm in the Zelly cup sure why not 10 furlongs um top four go with the golden derby he wins that that should be a good path for him 
Like, I think if I used him, he'd be great. But it's giving me Golden Boy vibes, and I'm a little bit worried. That's why I didn't put him in the honorable mentions for the recap. I, I'm getting Golden Boy vibes from him. He looks very strong on paper. Golden Boy was very consistent. I didn't lose a whole lot of races with him. And then we used him as a sire, and he hasn't really given us anything special. I'm a little bit worried about Angel Hearts in that regard. Heart rating is fantastic. Power rating is great. What's the stamina, though? I'm really concerned with that speed being at 74, but yeah. Um, we'll have to wait and see. He's only three years old, but he's already at his peak, so like he'll be able to be retired pretty darn soon. That's the crazy thing. Naked Chariot. Okay. I'm just going to continue to race you. I'm going to continue to extend his... um. His time, like, I just feel like until he's five years old, racing him now is really a waste of time. And as you can see, I can wait till next year and he's fine. Like, he's not going to be mad. That's kind of what lets you know he's okay with not waiting for a long time to race. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to give him a long layoff again because it's not, I mean, we're not winning races with him at this point. So, to me, racing him now is just a, a waste of time. Um, I'm going to look for a good dirt race next year. Grade 3 Camellia. Has he won a great... I mean, what's the best he's finished in this grade three? He's just been in opens. Okay. No grade threes. I mean, stick him to opens for next year. Um, yeah, I, I, like, there's really no point to race him now. That There's nothing to gain. <laughs> so, let's wait till March and race him in this uh, open Ottawa. So, yeah, he's basically going to be waiting a year to race almost at the same time. But next year, I will race him a lot more since he'll actually be five years old and some of these stats should be much better to the point where maybe we can start winning. Um, that's This is kind of the deal with him. Can you win with him? I'm sure you can, but, like, why? I don't need to try that. Like, we're just trying to get him good enough to win um, a, a good enough number of, of grade ones, get a dirt title by the time he hits his peak. Like, that's all he really needs to do. He doesn't have to overachieve. And I think as long as I breed him with the right broodmare, as long as we make that right decision, he'll be worth it. So I don't feel any pressure with having to race him now. And classy and smart. Four-year-old Philly here. As you can see, last corner leader, stretch burst. Golden boy, free fear. She's only lost twice, guys. She's finished in her 11 races. She's finished first or second. And mostly she's finished first with five grade ones. Like She's not bad, but again, this to me is more or less what free fear was doing. You know, like... Pretty similar stats, similar trajectory. She's four years old already. I'm just, I don't know. With that fast growth type, I'm just not convinced it makes sense to use her as a broodmare with the 44 power rating as well. I'm not saying I won't, but I, I, I'm just not feeling confident that it's worthwhile. Again, I think we have to be a little bit more disciplined in, in what we decide to do and who we use. So... Um, mid or long champ title. She's really not close to either of those. She has grade one wins at all over the place, so she's probably not getting a title. Um, so I guess at this rate, like, I, I just, I don't know. I don't feel motivated to put her in grade ones, but you know what? I still want to see if she's capable of making that happen. Um, so I'm actually going to see if I can get her doubling gold cup. I don't want to put her in that race. That's a pretty good one to save. Singapore, Paris. <sighs> Maybe the doubling gold cup. I don't know. When was the last time she's actually won a grade one? King Cup last year. No. World Philly and Mare Turf Cup. She did win that. That was big. <sighs> yeah, I really don't know what to do with her. I'm super, super indecisive. I hate when this happens. Um, I'm just going to put her in this grade 2 Dolphin Stakes. I figure if she actually wins this, maybe I'll put her back in another grade 1. Um, that fast growth type is just so kind of like, ugh. Like the horses peak as soon as they hit the track. I just don't really want that, you know? That's my whole, that's my whole hang up. I just don't want a horse, broodmare or stud, that's peaking that quick unless they absolutely dominated destroyed and achieved great 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 success on the track she's doing what her mother did more or less so i just don't feel like she's making that much of an impact good horse but worth retiring where we are now probably not moon singer 
is up in the grade three crystal stakes. I'll go ahead and see what this race actually is in a second. Um, field of 13, Laughing Hawk is here in the favorite. We're the third favorite. Yikes. So Crystal Stakes, this, if this is even a real race, it is. It is the Chunchi Sports Show Falcon Stakes. Okay, cool. I just noticed I was not actually writing these races down like I'm supposed to be, so I can actually save myself time later. Uh, let me put this. Classy and smart. What did we just run her in? The grade three Mississippi, right? Um, so bear with me. I'm just writing these things down because it really does help me later when I'm editing my videos. It saves me a lot of time because I don't have to like cross reference and go back into these videos and find these things. I just have them written down already. Um, so I should finish first. My notes are always so unorganized. I really need to be better about that. Okay, grade three crystal stakes. Uh, quick post parade. My game is the one horse, no chance. Two is Prompt Saint. Mm, no chance. We're on the three, Moon Singer. 71 speed. She's already about the peak. Fairy Singer and Moon Trapper. I would say she will be one of the first. She'll be actually the first and only Moon Trapper horse that I think won't work out for breeding legitimately. Um, yeah, unfortunately, her stats aren't looking good uh, as far as where we need them to be. Still don't know her heart rating. Still don't know her max distance, so that's unfortunate. Winning Legend is the four horse. No chance today. The five horse is Scotch Letter. Eh, probably nothing. Six is Saint Quartet. Good speed, good power, good braking. Yeah, second favorite makes sense. This guy is much better than I think... You know, we have to offer him. Ten, uh, seven horses, flaring song, no chance. Eight horses, space, Virgo, no chance, like most of these horses. The nine horses, laughing hawk, most of us know about him. He's a fast dude. He's not even close to his peak yet. Ten is secret midnight. <sighs> All these horses have such terrible heart ratings, I swear. Be any of them in a head-to-head, -head, it's game over. But he's still growing, so it could be a problem. 11 is Discreet Express. Kind of the same as the 10 horse. Not bad. 12 is Fighting Lord. Kind of the same as the last two. But for some reason, he's about to finish ninth. Scotch Opera is the 13 horse. Like the last three other horses, same stats. Could be there, couldn't. And that's your field of 13 here for the Crystal Stakes. Running six furlongs on the turf in a sprint. Let's see how it goes. All right. Decent start here for our girl Moon Singer. But yeah, I, I feel like when it comes to breeding, I already have an idea of which horses I we shouldn't use just because they're not doing anything special. Like, I think to use these horses for breeding, one of the biggest benchmarks that we have had is they have to do that much better than their parents. If they've achieved only the same amount of success as their parents, more or less, then it's not really worth it to me. Um, you know, we need to continue to elevate. She should get last corner leader, right? Ooh, they're gonna give that to the six. Yeah, six ends up completely rocketing past us. And is that that's Laughing Hawk? No, that's um the other horse, same quartet. She's fighting strong here. Same quartet absolutely gassed us there. Don't even know if she's gonna hit her goal. Ah, she's done. She's gonna finish fourth. Yeah, Moonsinger, um. I gotta be honest with you. I think she's a horse I'm actually going to let go. And at the, how I decided I'm going to do that, we're just going to say for kayfabe purposes that she was claimed. Let's we'll say this is a grade three claiming race and they claimed her. I just, I see no future with her and why, why should we continue to, to race, you know? Um, I just think we have to make those decisions now and I'm willing to do that. Like, it's okay. Every, some of these horses aren't going to be good, especially in this particular group. So I think it's better to cut our losses early and, you know, maybe she'll turn out to be something. 
if we race against her, but um, I think we're okay. So yeah, I'll say she was claimed and um, won't race with her again. Um, unfortunate that she's the first Moon Trapper fold to not work, but hey, Moon Trapper's other sons and daughters were absolutely fantastic, so I'm not even upset about that. Grade two, Apricot. Field of 14 running seven furlongs, three-year-old Phillies. Glam Queen is up. Remember, she was the honorable mention horse I did um, mention in the uh, update video. This race, in reality, is not a uh, real, real, well, no, I lied. It is a real race. The Ho Chi Hai, Ho Chi Hai Phillies Revue. Yeah, there it is. Quick post parade here. The one is Sunny Bird, no chance. Let's move on. The two is only one express. Not bad, but still think underclassed. The three is Clear Eden. Good speed, speed always helps in a seven for a long race. May have a chance. The four is Ancient Gesture. Uh, okay speed, decent power, excuse me, decent hearts, terrible power and stamina. Uh, late growth type though, Ancient Gesture. I wonder what type of filly she develops into. I mean, the power and stamina I would never agree to, but everything else isn't terrible. So, the five horses missing quest, good speed and good power. And only the fourth favorite, that's kind of scary. She's at her peak, and she's a closer. That's really scary. This is a horse I would look out for in this race today. Six is Major Opera. Yeah, no chance. Let's move on. Seven is Black Force. No chance. Let's move on. The eighth is General Love in the favorite. 84 speed, 86 heart. Loses will, fast pace, not good. Huh, she's kind of a mixed bag, ain't she? She could be really good, or she could be really bad on any given day. Okay. Nine horses, Dandy Minister. No chance. <laughs> the tent is pretty Eden. Um, expected to finish 14th. I think that's a little bit high. I mean, I think that heart rating helps. The speed is not fast compared to the rest of the field, but it's, I mean, the heart rating alone could get her into a couple more positions the 14th. I those other horses with terrible power and stamina ratings and heart ratings, they should be expected to finish 14. I think the game's a little off here, but whatever. 11 is Mixed Wildcat. Good speed, good power. Heart's not bad. Stamina's also not bad. So this is actually a pretty solid front runner here that can run on turf or dirt. So has grit as well. So pretty tough filly here in Mixed Wildcat. We're on the 12 in the favorite, Glam Queen. 85 speed, 92 heart. That's how you do it. 10 furlongs minimum, last corner leader. Still figuring her out, but she's been on a roll, so I expect nothing less from her to get this dub today. 13 is Desert Tempest. Eh, not bad, but no chance. <laughs> and the 14 horse is Manual Puzzle. Good speed, good heart, bad stamina, bad power. Expect this horse to be at the back of the pack. That should feel the 14 for the grade two apricot stakes. The grade two apricot stakes. All right, so I think after these band of races, that'll probably end today. We've already done six. This is the seventh one, and we're off and running. I don't even remember where she wants to run. Glam Queen. Do I even have it in, in your notes? Probably not. Um, I totally forgot where she wants to run. I thought I had her light type already figured out. What is that about? That's weird. Okay. I think she's a proceeder anyway, so I'm just going to keep her here. No, she's not. Hmm. I think I had it written down in one of my notes, but in a spread, uh, spreadsheet or something. But I, don't, I may have accidentally deleted it or erased it because I thought there was nothing useful on there. And turns out her light type may have been on there. But she's max down. We're running pretty fast fractions, 11-4, 11-5, like... I mean, Glam Queen's kind of cracked, bro. <laughs> Who is that charging? That's uh, it's General Love. Nah, Glam Queen's got it in the bag. Got it in the bag. Like I said, still don't know her light type. Would be nice to know. She's got it easily done there. Great grade two victory there for Glam Queen. She's the type of horse I want. You see, it's easy. I don't even know her light type. I'm just like, I'm just going to run her as a proceeder because that's the best thing to do. And... Yeah, <laughs> she absolutely blows that away. Glam Queen, another grade two. 
That is her third, actually, that's, that's her first grade two behind two grade threes. Doesn't have a grade one yet, but she's looking really, really strong so far. Um, she can go ahead and give her a quick save. Yeah, she's looking really, really nice. So pretty excited for how she's developing. And um, yeah, like I said, I think that's the type of horse I want to see. Like, I like her much better than, than Classy and Smart. Um, I think she clearly, in that grade two, she showed tremendous power. I, I think that's something we can't neglect in, when it comes to breeding and thinking about the potential that, that it would serve, you know? So I'm just trying to find a good spot to save that replay, and we'll keep on moving. Uh, I'll replace this summer sprint. I'll replace this east side band. She's achieved enough. I don't need to have all of her replays in the game. It's kind of ridiculous. Yeah, really good win there for Glam. That's what she does, though. 10 8, one of those fractions. Position is B. I mean, is she a front runner? I don't know. Again, I think we're completely fine running her where we are. Per the ball. I, I haven't raced with this guy since last year because I'm really not even looking forward to using him. I don't think I want to use him, but maybe I should. He's a favorite in this field of 13. I forgot, he's still developing. I was going to literally let him go, but he actually since, uh, what's his name? Silver? Silver gave him to us? I mean, it makes sense to like keep him, right? <laughs> I'd be kind of foolish to let him go. I'm just bored. Like I just, such a long growth type. Sustained is nice, though. I mean, if we use him as a sire, he'll, I think he'll be worth it for sure. There's nothing like super has wowed me about him yet. I think that's it. The wow factor hasn't kicked in for pearly balls. I'm kind of like, eh, all right. I'll get more excited when I see some more, you know, see something worthwhile. But maybe today will be that day in this open. I don't think I've raced with him in over a year, almost a year. But like I said, Slubber gave him to us for free. So I'd be a fool not to at least try to make it work with him for the time being. Who is that? Far Hill. Yep, I'm not chasing you. Thank goodness I don't have to. Who's that 11 running next to me in her punch? Yep, you guys can go chase each other. I'm perfectly fine sitting back here with the rest of the normal racers today. Now, are there more front runners here? I'm like, okay, I hope there aren't more front runners. <laughs> I'm like, then the pace is going to get kind of crazy, and then our positioning could be in jeopardy. <laughs> they are down the map okay. Easy going here with Per Labal so far. 11-9, 11-8, speeding it up. Just a little bit 12-0, though, in that last fraction, slowing it back down. Max stamina is good. Two sevens. Revolution is on. Could care less about the Revos. See how this does. No, Revo. A little bit late on the jump. We are the favorite, though. So we should be able to make this work. If he's truly as good of a horse as he should be. And creating some distance. Yes, he is. Wait, maybe not. Is that to knock on the outside? It is annoying to knock up. The rest of the field is coming. Oh, he's tapped. I think I just got him the win, though. Oh, my gosh. Definitely kind of botched the uh, the spurt a little bit. Wanted to get him going a tad bit sooner than that. Gets the win. And I'm not even going to hold that against the horse. I kind of messed that up for him in the stretch to really have a dominating pull-away victory. So... I'll, um, I'll say a good effort. Could have been better. Whoa, I knew you could win, buddy. I'm thrilled. Yada, yada, yada. Like, I almost lost, dude. I actually almost lost that. I'm not patting myself on the back for that victory. <laughs> almost lost that, but a win is a win, right? We move on to the Gray 3 Florida Handicap. Um, is this the Florida Derby? <gasps> Let's see. No, it is the Laurel RC Show Nakayama Himba Stakes. Wow. I'm definitely not saying all that again. Field of 14. We are the favorite with September Sky. We dropped her in class. She's still fun, still winning. So there's really no reason to like stop her. Um, 
from racing. And for some reason, I spell September Sky with I spelled her name wrong. I spelled S E M. Sem Sem Tem or like what? Like what am I doing? All right, quick post braid here. Let's go back to the one. The one horse's lively wings. Uh, could finish near the top. Could finish in last place. Perfect page is the two horse. Decent speed, has a chance to threaten from outside. The three horse is special game. Uh, no real chance from this horse today. The four is Bolero's Gal. Yeah, she's she, she's our mayor. She, she's our filly that we lost. 84 power. I didn't realize she was going to be that strong. From long live Bolero out of Irish Fleet. That's really annoying. Like, she was the only filly. Well, technically, she's the she was the first filly in the Bolero bloodline. We have Rapid Blade now, who's actually much better, so... But that 84 power rating, that would have been really nice. I wonder how fast she would have been. Front runner, too. Yeah, how does she get an 84 power rating from Lonely Bolero and Irish Fleet? I know Irish Fleet had a good power rating. I guess she just completely inherited that from a mother. Anyways, um, she has proven to be much... She, she's been much better when I've raced her the last couple of times. So certainly she she's not a horse to sneeze at at this point. Uh, she was claimed. Well, we'll say she was claimed from whoever has her now. If I was fresh earth, no chance today. Slower, slower, slower pace horse there. Six is critical punch. No chance today. Close race, not good. Has no heart. Seven is splendid item. Splendid item is splendidly bad. <laughs> oh, gosh. It's just the dad jokes, isn't it? The dad jokes are running rampant tonight. The eight is cosmic trial. Fifth favorite. Yeah, Decent horse, not terrible. Nine is Sleepy Image. Beautiful, beautiful. Would you guys consider this an albino or a gray? Or a something else? Palomino. I don't know. Like I don't want it I don't want that th I don't want that to become a thing on this channel. Like, can we not argue about horse coats? Like, let's just go with whatever the most general, you know, one is and just roll with that. I, I don't want that to happen. Anyway, sleepy image. Um yeah, she just has no heart. I'm not really giving her a chance. Ten is severe chase. Good power. Decent speed. Could be a threat. One of the favorites, September Sky. She's peaked, but she hasn't dropped off dramatically. She's certainly not as strong as she used to be, but she's still winning. And she's a dangerous front runner at seven years old still. Stretch burst, second win. Saw a race to win by Diamond Plan out of Osmond. Let's go. Toe sweet engine. Good speed. Decent heart. Tenth. I think the game is underestimating. Or the betting public is. 13 is Delicate Blues, good horse, terrible heart rating and stamina though, but pretty fast, good braking as well, solo runner and gate rocket, so we'll be setting the pace. 14 is Eternal Lark, no chance. Um, I'm going to be worried about Delicate Blues, like who's riding this horse? Kramer, Kramer, please do not set this horse out to a blazing pace, because that will ruin our race, and I'm not going to chase the horse if they want to go set a six length lead in the front, not doing it. Not doing it. Not to doing it at all. So we've hit all of our goals today except for one. Which, again, I was already on the fence about her, and I just decided it makes sense to let her go as a clamor. Oh! Okay, so I'm convinced. The AI horses in this game, they do get abilities. That is literally what Gate Rocket looks like. Holy cow! Remember, we were talking about that. I think I mentioned in the last episode. I'm like, I wonder if the AI also use, have abilities when you're racing them. That looked a lot like Gate Rock. And I know the horse has a great braking rating, but I haven't seen the AI break that fast in a long time. Look at this pace. I, I, have, I want no parts of it. I'm dropping September Sky back. Kramer and who else is up there? Bolero's gal? Wow, they're insane. But to think, like, they both had the power rating and potentially, well, the power rating for Bolero's gal. I don't know about if, um, if Delicate Blues is quite that strong, too. But we're Max Dam. September Sky, she's fine with being here. Like, I guarantee you, if I chase them this race, we would have no chance. And it's not even to say we still maybe couldn't lose this race on some weird stuff, but that was not ideal at all. Let's go ahead and chase them because they set a hot pace, and I think September Sky is going to be able to eat this up, hopefully. Let's go, my girl. Let's go. September Sky working, working, working. Delicate Blue still there. Here comes the field. Oh, no. Yep. 
Them setting that crazy pace butchered the race for all of us. How ridiculous. And 12th place. That's the worst I've done with her ever. I think. <sighs> Delicate Blues finished in 10th. Bolero's Gal finished in 13th. That, that race was doomed. <laughs> like, if I would have chased the pace with them, I just, I know I would have. I'm, come on. They lost. We would have lost, too. There was no hope. There was no hope. It's been happening a lot in my game with, like, certain races recently. Have you guys noticed that? We're like, the AI are just going bananas at the front, and it's ruining our race because who's going to chase Who's going to chase them? September Sky's past her prime. She's not that super horse anymore. You just can't do it. Gosh, that stunk. Um, oh, my goodness. That's really annoying. So, wow, that's her... I wonder, has she finally hit the, the, the wall? Grade 3, she finishes 12th. And then um, the grade 1 before that, she finished 14th in the China Sprint. I ran her 5 and 9, though. I'm running her all over the place. She's 8 to 12. So that last race should have been better for her. She was supposed to win it. But, I mean, when you got Bolero's Gal and Delicate Blues acting like absolute maniacs at the front, what, what am I really supposed to do there? You see, I can't retire her yet because there's no horse we can replace without messing up a breeding pair. It's not exactly where you want to end the episode. <laughs> but, again, what can I do, man? Like, if that if those horses would have set a normal pace, we could have taken the lead and actually won. I, that was really outside of my control. Like, all these broodmares are, you know, they're, they're prepped. I can't replace, so... With September Sky, I think maybe now I'm just going to give her maybe a little bit of a layoff. Maybe put her in another grade three or a grade two. And then maybe, I can't even, that's the thing. I have to race her for another year. I can't even retire her yet. Depending, let me, gosh. Let me see. I'm trying to figure things out. Um, if everybody conceives, then obviously we can't replace any broodmare until next year. Is there anybody we could replace if they didn't conceive? Tigris of Stone. You know what? I forgot. Diamond Planet Tigris of Stone may not work. Because Tigris is... She's only 11, but... We've had that happen sometimes where as soon as like our broodmares hit like over 10 years old, they start to struggle. And especially as they get to 13 and up. So Tigris is literally the only one I'd replace. Butterfly Effect is 12. We got to keep her for Valley King. Everybody else is pretty young in retrospect. So... Yeah, Tigris and Butterfly Effect are, like, the oldest back here. 100%. Yeah, they're the oldest, so... Oh, man, I'm a little bit worried with September Sky. That's two bad losses. I, I'm worried if I lose another race or don't hit her goal, we'll, we'll lose her. <sighs> the China Sprint, I probably had no business running her in. That grade three was an ideal race for her, but, like... Of course, I get hit with a, you know, just something unrealistic with a crazy pace. I just, I hate that the AI do that. They're just ruining their races. And then if you're on a front runner that's not at their peak anymore, it, it can also ruin yours. So she has 13 wins. Or excuse me, 13 grade one wins. 19 wins at a 29th start. She's finished in the top two, 25 over 29 times. I mean, Consistent girl, lots of wins, lots of grade ones. She she deserves it. I mean, she I think she's a Hall of Fame. She, yeah, GWS Sprint and Mid Champ. Definitely need to use her for breeding. So, like, <sighs> do I just... I got to be honest. I don't like ending her career on those two notes, but... Uh, come on, guys. Those of you that have been here for years know. I'm, just, I'm still paranoid about losing a horse like that. On, on like a fluke effort, you know, and I just, gosh, do I just save her till, till this point? I don't know. It's because like now there's pressure. If I lose another race, I could lose her. But I, I mean, I, obviously I would just reload my save. Like I'm not going to actually let the game take her away from me, but it's still the principle. I just, I hate that, you know, so <sighs> um. I'm going to wait till June to race her again. And will she have a handicap in an open? Yeah, 154. That. 
139. Okay, here's a grade three at 10 furlongs, 119. Hopefully, Delicate Blues, Bolero's Gal, and any other maniac of a horse that wants to set a blazing front running pace is not going to be there. Moonsinger, like I said, I'm letting her go. Um, the AI can do whatever the heck they want with her. I'm not even going to put her in a race. Um, so Pearly Ball, got him a win. It's developing so slowly. That's why I have zero desire to like race him. He's got three wins out of six starts, so 50% win ratio. So we'll continue to do what we need to do with Pearly Ball until he's closer to his peak. Um, run him in the Ruby. Fine, why not? Glam Queen, my girl. Our girl. Uh, still not telling me anything about her. Why? This is the annoying thing about Galbracer. I always talk about it. Just doesn't make sense. Nobody should be defending this at all. Four wins straight with the horse. Grade three, grade twos, and open. Game's still not telling me a whole lot about her. In fact, virtually nothing has changed since we've been winning with her. Like at this point, it should just be a metric. Like if you win a certain amount of races in a row with the horse, it just should reveal everything. Because to me, that's a clear indicator you're in the zone. You got to figure it out. Now, according to the game, I don't have it figured out. Four wins, no big deal. I'm not saying that's some crazy achievement. I'm just saying, like, we've won consistently. She's undefeated. Like, we should know more of her stats. It, it's ridiculous. The game is, like, gatekeeping that. They won the Free Asia uh, stakes, grade two next month. I really could put her in a grade one, but you know what? I'm going to keep her on this grade three streak. I mean, grade two streak. Because if she wins this next race, the top three go to the Golden Oaks, which means she'll be in the grade one Golden Oaks. She's on path for three-year-old filly of the year, and I think she'll get it. Buy Gentle House out of Free Fear. Now, you see, when you compare her to her stable mates, Classy and Smart, who's a year older, they're half siblings, but you can see the difference in domination. And again, Classy and Smart, she's never finished worse than second. So it's not as if she's a bad horse, but I think we can sense the difference in power and strength between Glam Queen and Classy and Smart. Not to mention Glam Queen's stats that I see so far when it comes to the power and the speed, they are higher than what Classy and Smart stats were at her peak. So again, if you're comparing the two, Glam Queen does actually win so far on merit and stats with the stronger sire. So... I think that makes sense. Um, we have her for that grade two. And then who else? Did I put everybody in a race? Yeah, I think that's it, right? Everybody's ready to go. So still getting through this month. But again, I want to keep these episodes shorter. It'll be a lot easier for me to edit these and most importantly, get more God Racer episodes out to you guys. So we did nine races today. And like I said, outside of that one race with well, Moon Singer and now with September Sky, we hit all of our goals. But gosh, I just hope we get a normal race with her next time out because that was that was an awful race we went i talked about it halfway through the race on the back stretch i'm like if we can win this because the ai are setting this crazy pace and it ruined us she definitely needs to be at the front um you know she can tuck in behind a leader if she's close and you're not setting a crazy pace but she's got to be leading that that's that's her strength if she can't do that she's really not the same horse especially past her peak so uh, we'll have to figure all that out, but I'm not going to worry. Again, if I were to lose her, I'm just reloading my save. The only downside to that is, let's say she's the fifth race on a card. I would have to redo the other four races, and that's what I hate doing on reloads in this game. It takes forever. So hopefully I can just hit her goal next time in the grade three, or maybe Tigris or Stone actually won't conceive, and we won't get another east side ban. And then I will retire September Sky and put her there, but we'll have to wait and see. Anybody to try on this grade two? Anybody like happy trial? You are a three-year-old colt. Decent. I mean, oh, normal growth type stats. Uh, no, pack passer. I like that ability, but fast pace okay and close race okay. Perfect chief. Three-year-old colt. Sustained. Closer. Terrible field rating. You see, that's the type of horse that's interesting to me. Ooh, ooh. Native River. I know about Native River. Solar runner, whip, front runner, right? Yep. Uh, fast growth type though. This is this is this horse at its best. Nah. 
I'm curious though. I worked with Perfect Ending. Um, who was I looking at? Perfect Chief. I'm actually going to give this horse a shot today. Ooh, and a gray. Lovely. Ah, this is this is a horse Amora wanted. I'm like, I don't really recognize that horse. So maybe that horse could actually be kind of fun to work with. Um, anybody here for these fillies? Nothing impressive. Broken Mirror? Five to seven. I'm just trying new horses out, and I'm trying to kind of make Omora mad by taking all of his rides. So <laughs> we're trying some new horses out again, just trying to see what else we can kind of work with in the game. So guys, it's going to do it here for this episode of Galbraith 2004, 2023. I'm still going to figure that out. Next time we come back, uh, hopefully we'll see if breeding actually works. We'll figure that out, figure that out in the beginning of the episode and everything else that comes along with that. And most importantly, more grade 1s and GWSs are coming as well. Appreciate you guys for love and support. Until next time, Horse Racing Gamer signing out. Great and fantastic day. I'll see you later. And goodbye. Welcome to Horse Racing Gamer, where champions are made.